Have you noticed, just kind of walking through a normal day, normal life, has it struck you or have you noticed that things are getting a little intense in our world? That the volume just kind of keeps getting louder and then it's louder here and then louder here and louder here. And that, that words um, have become more and more intense, sometimes harsh. And that the presence of just thoughtful words of blessing, people looking at somebody else and just speaking words of blessing, it seems to have fallen on hard times. We're going to talk today about the, the forgotten art, the lost art of blessing, of speaking words that bring life and hope to other people. We're going to try to look at the heart of God and let God search our hearts. And I think that there's something that's happened in our world where it used to be, for the most part, when you had conversation with somebody, you were like this. You were looking eye to eye and face to face, or, or at least voice to voice. But now we're communicating thumbs to thumbs. You know what I'm saying? It's like, duh, 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 take that, duh, 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 send, you know. And, and that, now we don't have to see the person to see their, their response and their expression when we tweet this or when we text that or when we give a comment on something. Sometimes it doesn't even have our name behind it. And so it allows this ongoing escalation of intense words. And I think it sort of limits or kind of keeps us from really speaking words of blessing. As I was thinking about this, I, I went to Jake. Jake's a, a member of our staff here, and he does a lot of our, uh, a lot of our online stuff. He just a lot of different things. Jake has got a lot of uh, ministry that he does here at Shoreline. But I asked him if he would just go online and find me some real text messages that reflect kind of this growing tension between people. And he responded back to me, he said, I looked at lots of real online texts, and most of them you can't use in church. <laughs> you can figure out what that means, but he basically said, a lot of the texts are not ones you can use. He said, but I found, he sent me 12 little real text messages as things I might be able to use to share with you to give a picture of kind of where the world is at. Five of those 12, I decided I couldn't use in church. And these were the nice ones. These are the nice kind of tough ones. But there were five that I found that I thought were, you know, kind of fun or at least creative in their thoughts. And, uh, and yet also they show kind of the tone of our day in our world. And so uh, here, here's the first one I thought was interesting. It said, the person says, do you want to be the sun in my life? Yes. Kiss, kiss, kiss. Good. Then stay 92,935,700 miles away from me. So mathematical, kind of interesting, but a little bit, a little bit tough. Here's one between a dad and a son. Hey, dad, I'm sorry to tell you this, but I'm dropping out of school. Dad responds, that's okay, son, just remember one thing. What's that? I don't like pickles on my Big Mac. <laughs> kind of a, you know, kind of a fatherly, uh, un, kind of tough, tough statement. Here's another one. This one, this one. This one just was, I, I just told someone that they were my least favorite person. Then I thought about you and changed my mind. And now I just wanted you to know. So a retaliation. I hope you get hit by a train, kissy face. And the response, I hope you explode. Kind of, you know, honest, but a little harsh. Uh, here's another one. Um, any plans for tonight? No, loser. Uh, and the last one says, hey, long time no talk. Let's keep it that way. Uh, so um, these, were, these were the friendly, harsh ones. These were the church-friendly, harsh ones. But the bottom line is this. We live in a time where being critical, being negative, being harsh, I think has become easier and easier and probably more and more acceptable. And the idea of looking at another human being and say, the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. Bringing words of blessing from the Lord of heaven. It seems like a, something kind of out of place. But God is the master artist. God is the one who speaks blessings. The Bible tells us that while we were sinners, Christ died for us. Before we even thought about him, while we were rebels against God, he gave his only son. God speaks word of, words of love and blessing and draws us to himself. He so loves the world that he gave his only son. And we want to learn from God. We want to look at the God who made us, the God who is beautiful in all ways, and learn from the one who is the master artist. And we want to say to God, I hope this is your prayer. God, help me receive your blessing and help me become a conduit 
a channel of your blessing to others. Lord, that's our prayer today. We just pause as we prepare to open your word, as we prepare to learn together, and we pray, oh God, that in this ever-increasingly intense world where so many words are so harsh, may we become people who paint a picture. May we become become artists of blessing in our homes, in our schools, in our neighborhoods, in our workplaces. May we overflow with your blessing because we're so filled with it. Teach us this lesson today and make us your artists in this world. We pray this in your name, Jesus, and for your glory. Amen. Well, we're going to begin where we begin every week in the series, Movement One, the Master Artist Plan. We're going to look at the God who made us, the God who loves us, and we're going to get a picture, a vision of God who is the master artist of all good things, including blessing. That God is the one who offers us a vision of blessing. So if you have your Bibles, turn to Numbers chapter 6. It's in the Pentateuch. The Pentateuch is the first five books of the Old Testament. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, then Numbers, where we are right now, Deuteronomy. So if you have your, your phone or your tablet or your Bible and you want to turn to that, we'll have it on the screens as well. But Numbers chapter 6, we'll begin in verse 22. And what's happening here is that God is speaking to Moses, who is leading the people. And Moses' brother Aaron is the high priest and his sons are becoming the priests. And so he's saying to the, to the priest and to the high priest, to these, to these leaders, he's saying, I want you to be a conduit of blessing. And so I want you to listen to these words from Numbers chapter 6, beginning in verse 22. The Lord said to Moses, tell Aaron, who was his brother and also the high priest, tell Aaron and his sons, this is how you are to bless the Israelites, my people, God says. Say to them, The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you. Not his back, but may God turn his face toward you and give you peace. Now listen to what comes afterwards. So they will put, God says, so they will put my name on the Israelites, on my people and I will bless them. At the end of the day, the point is not that Aaron or his sons or you and me have all this power and all this blessing to give, but God does. And God says, I will pass my blessing through you to others. That's the message today, that we would recognize the blessings of God and that we would be a conduit, somebody who passes on those blessings to others. Even when we don't feel like blessing, God says, I do feel like blessing. So if you're here and you're a follower of Jesus, I mean, you've come to the cross, you've confessed your sins, you've received Jesus Christ as the one who came from heaven, lived, died, and rose again, and you've accepted his grace. God says, I bless you. And I want my blessing to flow through you. If you're here today or you're online today and you're not yet a follower of Jesus, this is part of what it means to be a Christian. So if you're thinking about becoming a Christian, it's like, well, part of that is going to mean that what we talk about today is something God would want to become part of your life that you would become someone who would bring the blessings of heaven to other people. And so I I just want to ask a question. What should we notice about blessing in this passage? When you look at at Numbers chapter 6, verses 22 through 27, particularly verses 24, 25, 26, the words of blessing that, that are to be spoken by God's mature believers over the lives of others. Just notice some things like this. Bless. God says, I want you to bless You be somebody who speaks and brings and lives in a way that brings the blessing of heaven on other people. That's amazing that God can not only bless us, but bless through us. And then may the Lord keep you. Part of this blessing is, listen, may God watch over you. May God protect you. May God carry you through that sickness you're going through, that challenge in your home. May God keep you, wrap his arms around you and hold you close. That's a sense of protection and watching over, may God keep you. There's intimacy. I love this. May the Lord make his face to shine on you. Isn't that a great picture? Have you ever watched two people where when one person looks at the other person, their face shines? It's radiant. They love that person so much, there's so much delight that when they see them, they just light up. Have you ever seen that? I get to see that regularly. Because when my wife looks at me, Her face lights up. I'm not always exactly sure why. (laughs) 
But Sherry has told me this, and I, and I know it's true. She's told me, she says, Kevin, there's times where, like, you'll go off to church, you'll, you'll go to work, you go to church, and, I, and we sometimes we'll ride together, but sometimes we, because we both work at the church here, sometimes we'll ride together, sometimes she'll come later. But she says, you're like, you'll go to church sometimes, I'll come in my car. She says, I'll come, like, 20 minutes later. She says, when I see you, like, in the hallway or something, she's like, I'm just like, oh, there's Kevin, there's my husband. And I'm like, and, and she said other people tell her that they see that on her face. What, what an amazing thing to have a person Who's, who lights up, may their, their, their face shines on you. Well, guess what? May the Lord's face shine on you. God delights in you. He delights in his children. I remember years ago, Sherry and I, I we worked, did work with a university in Michigan where for about three years I was one of their teaching pastors, so I taught twice a month at the evening service to college students. And it was wonderful and it was delightful. And at the end of our time there, when we were saying farewell to all the students, there were a couple of these younger women who came to me and Sherry and they said, they said, we've just been so inspired and so lifted up by watching you two together. And particularly, they said, by watching Sherry watch me when I teach and when I preach. And it's funny because when we, when we had three services, now we're in two services, but you know, her, her, however many services we have, everybody at Shoreline thinks that Sherry goes to their service because she goes to all the services. And she laughs at my jokes every time. Um, <laughs> Because I'm hilarious. No, because she loves me. She delights in me. But I remember one of these young women said, I hope I meet a man someday that when I see him, I light up like Sherry lights up when she sees you. Just watching the relationship gave hope. Because when God, do you know that when God looks at you, he, he lights up, he delights. And you can pray that over other people as well. That this blessing is so beautiful and so powerful. May, may God give you his peace. You can pray blessing over people. May God help you through this anxious time. May God help you through the worry and the fear you're dealing with. May God grant you his graciousness, his peace, his presence. And then as you look at this, at this blessing, you realize that, that the voice is the voice of God. It, 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 there's this sense of intimacy with God, the sense of closeness to God. At the end of the day, Aaron and his sons and you and me, we don't have to speak our blessing over everybody else. We can speak God's blessing. And here's the good news. When you don't feel like blessing somebody, guess what? There is someone who wants to bless them. God Almighty. And he, and he will invite you to be somebody through whom he can bring his blessing. Can you imagine a community and a world, a home, a workplace, a neighborhood where everybody blessed thoughtfully, intentionally, lovingly, in a caring way. And so as you look at this passage, I hope it kind of awakens you to this call to blessing. But we're going to actually walk through some of, the, some of the words of Jesus, teaching of the Apostle Paul, the call of Abraham, and through all of these things, the Old and New Testament, beginning to end, this call for God's people to be people who bless, to be these master artists of blessing, like our Father who blesses, even when we don't deserve it, we become a conduit of blessing. This is all through the Bible. So here's a question as we start. Why would God establish a rhythm of blessing? Why would God establish a rhythm of blessing where God is saying, listen, I want you to regularly, consistently speak blessing over people. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious to you. May God give you his peace. Why would God say, make this a rhythm, a part of your lifestyle, a part of who you are? Well, I thought about that. Why would God do that? And I came up with at least four reasons. I think God calls us to a rhythm of blessing. And here's the picture. That you and I walk through our day looking for opportunities to bless. That we walk through our home looking for opportunities to bless. That we walk through the workplace looking. Our school, where we go to school, we're looking for opportunities to bless and to bring words from God of grace and love and care. Why would God want this to be a rhythm? Well, one, because we need it. Every single one of us we need God's blessing to be spoken to us through the scriptures, by the Holy Spirit's gentle voice, but also through people who can speak words of blessing. We all need words of blessing. Also, I think God calls us to this rhythm because we forget to bless. We could go a week, a month, a year and have someone right around us, a family member, a spouse, a friend, and not think to actually stop and say, do you know what you mean to me? Do you know what you mean to the Lord? And speak words of blessing. We forget. We just get busy going through life and we forget that God calls us to be people who carry his blessing. We also need this rhythm because we forget that we are blessed. We forget all that God has done to lavish his blessing, to lavish his goodness. 
We forget that while we were still sinners, the Bible says, Christ died for us. We forget that God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. When we didn't care about God, when we were hard-hearted, when we were rebels, God said, I love you, I bless you, I will pour out my goodness on you. And we forget God's blessing. And when other people start to bless, we remember, oh, I am so blessed by God. And so, so we need to remember that. And, and then also, in our world right now, there's just a lot of cursing. I don't mean like people using foul language. I mean there's like words that break hearts, words that hurt, words that damage others. There's lots and lots of harsh words flying around. It's becoming the norm. And if we're not careful as Christians, we can start just speaking and retaliating and coming back with words that are harsh and cutting. We have to remember the power of what we say, both to bless, but also the power to curse. I remember walking into Lone Hill Junior High School for a number of years. Uh, I was a youth pastor at a church that met in a, in, in a junior high. Uh, we met in this middle school, Lone Hill uh, Middle School in San Dimas, California. And we'd set up in the cafeteria for worship services. And then the, the staff lounge was where we had nursery. And you know, we'd go in and set up every week. Well, I was walking into the school just during the midweek to go into the offices to check on something. So I'm walking up the stairs, kind of going up into the offices... And sitting over here to my left, there's kind of like this little half stone wall with these two, two middle school guys just hanging there talking, sitting there. And then there's this middle school girl walking out and kind of walking toward me. So I'm walking in. This girl is walking towards me. She's kind of got a smile on her face and she's kind of walking along. And these two guys are over here. And as I'm walking up, this girl comes and as she passes these two boys, they decide it would be fun if they made some observations about what they thought of her physical appearance. I won't break down the specifics, but it was harsh and unkind. And as I'm walking and I see this, as I hear them talking and see these words coming like daggers from them, I watch this middle school girl's face go from smiling and kind of peaceful, just almost like morphing into just brokenness and devastation in a matter of seconds. Words are powerful to build up, to bless, to strengthen, and to tear down and to destroy. And we who follow Jesus are called, we're called by him to be a conduit of words of blessing. And you're going to find out sometimes to the most surprising people. Maybe words of blessing sometimes to people that we might not naturally bless. Proverbs 12, 18 says this, there is one whose rash words are like sword thrusts. There are some people whose rash, thoughtless words are like sword thrusts, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. When you bless, you minister the healing power of the living God. Movement two is the forgotten art. Just recognizing that, that though, though God's heart is for blessing, although God is the master artist and he blesses us even when we don't deserve it, that, that, that there's sort of this, this forgotten art. There's this reality that in our world is changing and it's always a battle, but I think the last 18 months, the last two or three years, it's been particularly tough, our world. On it, it, It's not just that, that, you know, people say, oh, you shouldn't just be harsh with each other. The point is, no, you should actually bring blessing to others. And, and I think that's fallen on hard times. In Luke chapter 6, and these are the words of Jesus. In Luke chapter 6, verses 27 and 28, Jesus is teaching this large group of people. And as he's teaching, he says these words. And he says four things that are all staggering and really challenging. Luke 6, beginning in verse 27. He said, but to you who are listening, I say, this is Jesus. He says, I say, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless, bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. All four of these declarations are radically countercultural. These are not the natural responses. If we're operating in our own power, this is not how we're going to live. Our natural response to these things is not what God calls us to, but he calls us to a supernatural response in this life if we receive the grace and the blessing of God. So a question, how do you understand this kind of a Bible passage? How do you understand this in our conflicted world? How do you understand it when, when, it's, when the world is like this? When there's tension? We are in a time right now of tension over all kinds of stuff. Over the last 18 months, 
There's been, it's like wave after wave after wave pounding on the beach of our lives with new things to be conflicted over. And if you agree with me, you're on my side and I like you. And if you don't agree with me, you're kind of the enemy. I've seen people, I've seen families torn apart. People aren't speaking to each other over all kinds of different things where there's a difference of opinion. There's a difference of, of view of things. There's a different view of how the world should function. But, but as Christians, we've got to battle against that temptation to be sucked down that road and to become part of kind of the way the world is functioning. You know, when you curse me, how do I respond? When you come against me, how do I respond? Now, I think for every one of us, if you're a follower of Jesus, you can say, well, there's my natural response, and then there's the supernatural response of God's power in me. And so can I, can I do a little pastor confession time? So here I go. Forgive me, congregation, for I have sinned. You can ask me how long has it been since your last confession. How long? Okay. Like I say, okay. It's been only about, well, I confessed in the last service. And I, there's not a day that goes by that I don't come before God and say, God, I want so much to live for you. I want so much to follow Jesus. But it's, it's hard for me, and I'm struggling. I'm learning. I'm taking steps, but it's challenging. And I can give you a confession right now. When people curse me, when people come against me with a curse toward me, my natural response is not, may I bless you? Can I be totally honest? And if somebody curses and attacks and is vicious to someone I love, it's even harder. For, I, I'd rather someone attack me than attack someone I love. And I'm just telling you, my knee jerk, my natural response when somebody curses, when somebody attacks, when somebody hurts me or someone I love is not to bless. Am I the only one? Okay, there's at least a few of you that are with me on this, okay? I mean, I'm, just, I'm just telling you, it's, it's a challenge. It's a growth area. And, and, and there, there's two wonderful theological words that, that, that Christians think about when we think about our salvation and our walk with Jesus. And, and those words are salvation and sanctification. Let me give you two, two little definitions. Salvation is the moment you recognize the grace of Jesus. He died for you. He rose again. He gives his life. He offers forgiveness. And you receive that free gift. Salvation happens when you receive Jesus and you become a child of God. You are saved by his grace. You are part of his family. It happens at that moment. Sanctification is growing more and more to be like Jesus. That doesn't happen like that. That happens through a whole lifetime over and over and over again as we learn to be more like Jesus. I feel like I've learned to, it, I think there was a point where when somebody would attack or curse or be cruel to me or someone I love and their words would be harsh or whatever it was, there was a time when, when my response was kind of like, okay, I'm bringing it back at you and about twice as much as you brought to me. Even when I was a young Christian, I mean, that was, that was like my response. And God's given me a gift with words. And so I can bring words to bless, but I can also bring words that cut. And then the Holy Spirit over the years and over time is challenging. And so I think we're all on this journey. So some of you might say right now, boy, if somebody curses me, I don't think I'm ready to bless them yet. Maybe what I can just do is keep my mouth shut. Keep my thumbs inactive from responding back. You know, how, how, do, how do we respond? You might say, I'm not ready to bless yet, but I need to not respond in like kind. That's the sanctification journey of becoming more and more like Jesus. As we walk through God's word today, as we hear God's invitation for us to become people who bless, even bless those who curse us, that, that, that we, would, we would open our hearts to what God wants to teach us. I know for me in those moments, in those moments when somebody attacks, when somebody is cruel, when somebody brings uh, their behavior or their words are like a curse to me or to someone I love, the best thing I can do is just stop and not respond, because if I respond immediately, my response is almost always wrong. I'm just telling you. If I respond immediately, it's going to be my natural response, not the supernatural work of the Holy Spirit. So just to kind of hold back before I respond. And then what I try to do is I just turn my eyes to Jesus. And I try to picture Jesus as he, as he was bearing the cross and bearing my sin and bearing my shame. As Jesus looked at the people who had driven the nails into his body and said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. That's a blessing. Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. When I understand that in all of my rebellion and all of my sin, when I was an atheist and when I thought nothing of God, he loved me and he called me. He was just calling me to himself and loving me. I have to keep my eyes on Jesus in those moments because I want to respond like Jesus. And if my eyes are on me, I'm going to respond a whole lot more like me than I'm responding like Jesus. Romans 5.8, and I shared this a moment ago, but Romans 5.8 says, but God demonstrates his own love for us in this. 
while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. The greatest act of blessing, the sacrifice of Jesus, came when we were sinful and rebels. God didn't do it because we deserved it. He did it because he loved us. And when we know him, we start this journey that's going to last a lifetime of learning to become people who bless even when we're cursed. And Jesus knew what that was like because he was cursed by people and he continued to bless. Movement number three is we just recognize that the picture is marred. In our world, things are mixed up. Things are upside down. And yet God continues all through the scriptures to call us to be people who bless. So we, we looked at, in the book of Numbers, Old Testament, the Pentateuch, there's this call, speak this blessing over the people. We look at Jesus in Luke, and Jesus says, bless those who curse you. Now look with me at Romans chapter 12, and in Romans 12, we're now looking at the Apostle Paul's teaching, inspired by the Holy Spirit. But remember, the Apostle Paul, as he writes these words, inspired by the Holy Spirit, when, when he writes these words, the Apostle Paul, as he served Jesus, was beaten, abused, lied about five times, they strapped him up, and they, they knew that if they lashed somebody 40 times, they would die, so they did it 39 times. That happened to him five times. 195 scars on his body from being beaten. This is the guy, inspired by the Spirit, writing these words. So he's not talking about you know, theoretical stuff. He's talking about the reality of trying to live for Jesus in this world that is so broken and where the picture of God's vision has been so marred. Romans chapter 12, beginning in verse 14. The Apostle Paul writes these words. <clears throat> Bless those who persecute you. Read those words. Bless those who persecute you. When Paul was persecuted, he was beaten with rods. He was strapped up. And, I mean, it wasn't just like, oh, they didn't smile at me. They weren't friendly. I mean, he was persecuted. And he writes these words inspired by the Holy Spirit. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. That recognition, the natural response is, if people persecute or curse you, curse them back. No, bless, don't curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Man, there's a lot there. But that opening line, bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse. Uh, this is just a high, high calling. And right now in our world, that's not the knee-jerk response. Right now, retaliation. You curse me, I curse you back. You attack me, I attack you back. And it, it, it's just like, boom, boom, boom. Retaliate, retaliate, retaliate. He's like, well, where does it end? For followers of Jesus, as we grow in faith, as we grow in sanctification, as, you know, and, and again, for some people right now, you're like, man, if somebody attacks me, my, my immediate response, let them have it back. Maybe your starting point is just saying, Lord, let me just, you know, let me take 10 seconds before I respond. Let me consider just keep my mouth closed or not texting back or not responding back. Let me ask the question, how do I not curse in response to a curse? Some of you are going to say, I'm not, I'm not ready to even think about blessing right there. Just, Lord, just give me strength to not retaliate, right? Maybe that's your starting point on that journey of sanctification, you walk down that road and eventually you're saying, maybe, maybe I can find, you know, think about even in your mind the category. Someone has just persecuted me, cursed me, come against me, or someone I love. Could I even dare to pray, Lord, is there some way I could bless this person? Doesn't that sound almost, doesn't that sound almost crazy? It's, just, it's, like, it's like, wait, that's just not how people function. No, but that's how God, the master artist, functions. And that's what he calls us to. It's a high calling. It's a huge challenge but we have to be open to it and respond to it. Here's another question. Why do we often respond out of our natural frustration and not supernatural grace? If you're a Christian, why is it? Don't you just wish that like, okay, I'm a Christian now. I believe in Jesus. I've accepted him. He lives in my heart. The Holy Spirit's in me. I'm trying to grow in my faith. I'm, I'm at church. I'm, I'm online. I'm, I'm worshiping. I'm trying to grow. Why don't I just, when something like that happens, why don't I just respond just like Jesus? And here's my theological pastoral answer. I don't know. I don't know how all that works. I know it's a journey of growth. I know with time, you might learn to more and more respond in a way that honors Jesus and blesses others. But you won't. You can go two weeks, two months, 20 years, a lifetime, and not change at all. Or you can decide today, Lord, I want to to grapple with what it means 
to be a person who blesses. Maybe your starting point is this. I don't know if I'm ready to bless people who curse me, but maybe I just need to start blessing people who love me. <laughs> maybe I'm married and I need to learn to look at my spouse and give God's blessing to them. My kids, my grandkids, and speak words. Maybe I need to, with my friends who are Christians, speak words of blessing. Maybe that's my starting point. I'm not ready to do it with my enemies and those who attack me, but, but practice by speaking blessing to people who you know and love and trust. Because we can just get busy living life and forget to bless the people who are closest to us. And, and, and so to take those steps forward. And then movement four, reclaiming God's good gift. God wants us to reclaim this gift. He wants us to be people who understand that our words have power. If you go to the very beginning of the Bible, if you want to find the easiest place to find your spot in the Bible, it's Genesis 1.1. That's, that's the first book of the Bible, the first chapter of the Bible, and the first verse of the Bible. Listen to these words from Genesis 1.1, and I want you to notice that as God is creating the heavens and the earth, notice how he did it. How did God create the heavens and the earth? Genesis 1.1 through 5. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, God spoke words. God said, let there be light. And there was light. God saw the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, the darkness he called night. There was evening, there was morning the first day. And as you walk through Genesis, as God creates every time, it's, and God said, God spoke the Gospel of John chapter 1, verse 1, begins very sim uh, similar. It's kind, of, it's kind of, if you were an ancient Jew uh, reading the Gospel of John, you would go right back to Genesis 1, 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. It talks about how he created all things were created through him. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. That God created the world through his Word, Jesus Christ, the living Word. But there's also the sense of the spoken Word. That, that things are created as we speak. And things are decreated and destroyed as we speak. I watched a little junior high girl have her day and maybe her week and maybe even more than that deconstructed, decreated, broken by just a couple of words, careless words from these kids. I'll bet you those boys had no idea the damage they were doing. As deep as it could go. But when I watched her face, I was reminded of the power of our words. God created by speaking. And we can bless and bring incredible uh, gifts and goodness and love to people through our words. Um, a couple people told me, I, 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 I've never written a sonnet before, but I wrote one this last week. If you got my email and if you read it, um, I wrote a sonnet uh, and I based it off of an, a, a, an older ancient piece of literature, a, a sonnet. Uh, you know, How many ways do I love thee? Let me count the ways. If you didn't read my email I sent out to you, that's okay, but I wrote a sonnet to Shoreline Church and I told you different ways that I love you. And I, and I can say this as a pastor, I love this church. I love God's family at Shoreline Church. Whether you're at home, traveling, out in the courtyard, family worship venue, in the worship center, it's a crazy time where we're all fragmented and scattered, but we are one body and we are one church. And I can say with all my heart, I love this church. I hope those words speak to you because as a, pa as a pastor, there's, it's a joy and a privilege to serve any time, but especially when you love people so much, when it's such a great group of people seeking to follow Jesus. I remember talking with a woman on a plane one time as I was traveling. She was a hardcore atheist. I mean, hard, hardcore atheist. I'd asked her a lot of questions about her atheism, and she actually was a communistic atheist, and she uh, had a certain worldview, and she just started talking to me before she knew I was a Christian or a pastor. I was just asking her questions because she was interesting, and, and, and she basically said, well, you know, Christians are so mean and hate-filled, and they're always attacking people and always being vicious, and she's describing these horrible, horrible, horrible Christians. And I said to her, I said, have you met a lot of Christians? She says, no, not really. And I, so I, I spoke words. I said, can I tell you something? She said, sure. I said, and I ended up, we talked about the fact that I was a Christian and a pastor, but I, I, I said to her, can I tell you something? I said, I know thousands of Christians, thousands of them, and I haven't met a single one, anything like these vicious, horrible people you're talking about. I said, I said if I could introduce you to, to all the Christians I know, I said, I think you would like them, and they would probably like you too. So we might disagree. I said, you and I are going to disagree on some things. We clearly do. But I said, that doesn't mean I can't like you. And I said, but I think if you met, I, I just, I gave her a whole different, and I could tell she was like, she, I, I said, I said, 
I know thousands of, I said, I'm in that world. I said, I said, maybe I know all the nice ones. Maybe I told her, I said, maybe I know all the nice ones. But I said, the Christians I know are loving and caring and generous and kind. And they have convictions and they hold to them, but they're not mean-spirited or nasty. And she actually looked at me, she said, really? I said, really? But just that one conversation could change the way she sees things because you're speaking truth. Into our world today, we've got to speak truth. There's so much stuff being thrown out that's not true, and we've got to speak truth. And in that one conversation, I was able to say to her, most Christians would disagree with some of your beliefs, and you would disagree with them, but I think you would get along with them if you got to know them because they're a lot like I am. They love people. They care about people. And that was shocking to her, but those words, I believe, have power when we speak words to people. In Genesis chapter 12, uh, we meet Abraham, who becomes Abraham. He becomes sort of the, the, the founder of the, the, the ancient people of God in the Old Testament. And I want you to listen to God's call to Abraham, who becomes Abraham. Listen to God's call and listen to the topic of blessing that's in the call of the first person to kind of lead, you know, kind of be the, the starter of God's people in the ancient world. The Lord said to Abraham, this is, this is uh, Genesis 12, 1 to 3. The Lord said to Abraham, go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. He calls him to a new place. And here's what God tells him. I will make you into a great nation. And God says to Abraham, I will bless you. I will make your name great. And you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. And whoever curses you, I will curse. And all the peoples on earth will be blessed through you. God says to Abraham, and all the peoples on earth will be blessed through you. I believe that's God's message for us as well. All the peoples on earth will be blessed through you, through my church, through my people. That's the heart of God. That's the desire of God. God says, I will bless you and you will be a blessing. I prayed at the beginning of the message and I hope you join me in that prayer. God, help us understand that we have been blessed by you so we can become a conduit, a kind of a pathway, a channel of your blessing going into the world, into my home, into my workplace, my school, my neighborhood, wherever I am, my social settings, where I go play and have fun. Let me overflow with your blessing. So I want to ask you a question, a personal question for you. Who can you begin to bless in your words and in your actions? Just in your own heart. And maybe say, Lord, put someone on my heart. Who is someone you can begin to bless it might be somebody real close. It might be your spouse. It might be a child or a parent. It might be a sibling. It might be a friend. It might be somebody at work. And, and, and God may put someone in your heart that you go, man, I can begin to bless them. That's going to be a tough one because I wouldn't naturally bless them. Or maybe it's somebody who's like, well, that, that, that's somebody who I really love. I just don't very often slow down and look at them and say, God bless you, and I'm so thankful for you. And just, I don't often stop and really speak blessing into their life, and I can do that. Who's one person right now that God wants to overflow his blessing from you to them. And will you open your heart to be used by the Lord to be a conduit of that blessing? Movement five, each week as we're together on this series, The Forgotten Art, is becoming an artist. Becoming an artist as God is perfectly and reveals it to us. And so as you seek to become exactly who God wants you to be, as you are in this journey of sanctification, becoming more like Jesus... Would you be willing to look at people and say something like this? The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance on you and give you his peace. Would you speak peace and graciousness and protection, God's keeping hand? Would you speak the joy of God's face over people? Would you be willing to let God use you to be a blessing to others? How could your home, neighborhood, workplace, church, everywhere you go change if you consistently bless others in the name of Jesus? How would our world change? How would our community change? How would our relationships change if we consistently said, God, I want to speak words of blessing. I want this to be a part of my life. I had the privilege of watching a family who lived like this. It, it was a family, it was a, a pastor who I got to know when I was in seminary. So when I was in my, doing my master's work, and Sherry and I were in school with him, doing our master's work together, Ken Corver was his name. And Ken Corver had been raised by a dad 
and a mom who spoke blessing to him. As a matter of fact, his dad, every time he left the house, his whole life growing up, would place his hand on him and say to him, can the Lord bless you and keep you? The Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord be gracious to you. And, and his dad would speak Aaron's blessing over him every time he left the home. And Ken and his wife Lisa did that with each of their children every time they left their home. They would place their hand on them. They, 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 the kids were going to take off. They said, come here real quick. Give them the blessing. And Ken actually even told me that a couple of his kids would get to the point along the way where they were just kind of like, oh, dad, can I bless me again, you know. But he said when they got a little bit older and they moved out, when they come back home to visit, when they'd leave, they'd say, dad, come here. Do it. Give me that blessing. So Harold Corver poured blessing into his children, including Ken. And Ken became my friend during my master's program, and Ken began to pour blessings into me because it's all he had seen his whole life. And so Ken, who's my same age, and we, we talk on the phone probably every four to six weeks, and we talk and pray together, we compare notes. He pastors a church down in L.A. that I think, I think it has 11 services on a Sunday in four or five different languages. You think we got it complicated here, man, they got it complicated there. But, but, but Ken, when I, Ken and I talk on the phone. At some point, every time we talk, he'll say, Kevin, can I share something with you? And I know it's coming. And then he'll say this to me. He'll say, Kevin Harney, he calls me my, my first in life. He goes, Kevin Harney. He'll say, do you know how much God loves you? He said, do you know how proud your father is of you? Do you know that God delights in you? He's my age. He's not like this old guy. He's my age, but he just speaks these words. And every time he does it, my heart just melts because I need to be reminded, just like you do, of the blessings of God. And I hope to live that out because Harold impacted Ken and Ken impacted me. And I hope I can impact other people by speaking words of blessing. And God delights in that. God calls us. There's this forgotten art of blessing. And so, so memorize. Memorize number six, verses 24, 25, 26. Memorize that short blessing. Get it in your heart and your mind. Speak words of blessing often to people whenever you can. Text words of blessing. I had somebody text me between services and said, I just text, texted two blessings, one to an easy person to bless and one to a challenging person. I didn't ask any more details. They just, they, but that today, between services. They said, I just texted two blessings. Um, take, make sure your actions reflect your words of blessing. When you're speaking words of blessing, make sure you live in a way that blesses people. Um, keep your words and, and your actions and your blessings in line together so that our lives are consistent. And, and I just want to challenge you that, you that you would hear this invitation, hear this call, that God would say, that we would look at God and say, God, you blessed us when we didn't deserve it. You loved us before we loved you. God, God, you speak blessing to us every single day. May I so receive that and be so filled with that blessing that it overflows to others. And maybe for me right now, it's just that when something hard happens, when somebody's tough, I don't just retaliate. I learn to slow down a little bit. Maybe I'm going to start blessing people who are easy to bless that I should have been blessing every day. I just wasn't noticing, you know? And maybe I'm getting to the point where I'm ready to bless someone even when they're coming against me. I'm willing to speak the blessings of God to people and to live in a way that blesses people. And what difference could that make? Lord God, this is our prayer today. And Lord, it's a simple prayer, but it's a really huge prayer. May we recognize and hear your blessing from the scriptures by the still small voice of your spirit through people in our lives who speak blessing to us in your name. May we receive those blessings and be filled with those blessings. And God, may we then become People who just naturally, consistently are looking, that we're walking through our days looking for opportunities to bless others. May we begin today and may that carry us through all of our life. Let your blessing flow through us to others for your glory, that we could put your name and your blessing on the people around us. We pray this in Jesus' good and beautiful name. Amen. Amen. Before I ask you to stand and send you off with a word of blessing, a couple of things. First of all, this Wednesday night is night of worship. It is a highlight of the month. Uh, we are going to be gathering, continue to study the names of God. And so if you're online, we are going to have online night of worship. If you're in the courtyard, we're going to have courtyard live streaming night of worship. And here in the worship center, 615 Wednesday night, we're going to worship Praise God, uh, share communion together, have a great night of worship here. So wherever you are, join us 615 this Wednesday night, night of worship. And also on the campus, we will have children's programming during night of worship. And then after the week after that, we'll start with regular weekly children's programming here at the church and adult classes.
And, and we're trying to figure out how to do some of those things online, some here, but we'll be doing things on campus and connecting online where we can. So be sure you're part of that on Wednesday nights going forward. Uh, we're launching some new small groups in a couple of weeks. We're going to be doing a nine-week series uh, on the book of Revelation. And I have the joy of preaching the first seven weeks of that series. I'm really excited about it. And so we're going to be starting when this series is done. We're going to jump into a nine-week series on the book of Revelation. And so if you want to get into a small group and dig into the book of Revelation, uh, we're going to start some new small groups. You can go right out of the worship center, down the stairs. And I think it's on the right-hand side. Is that where where we're at, Ashley? Right-hand side. As you go down the stairs. If you're in in the courtyard, walk up towards the building. It's on the left-hand side. There's a booth there all about uh, small groups. So jump into that and become part of that. Uh, we're doing baptism. I love when we do beach baptisms. And on, on uh, October 3rd, we're going to, in Del Monte Beach, we're going to do an outdoor beach uh, baptism service. And so today at 1230 in the Peninsula Room, right through the lobby here, in the Peninsula Room, there's a class about baptism. So if you've never been baptized, and you say, I, I'd love to get baptized. I'd love to get baptized in the ocean. And that, you know, outdoors, and that, we have a bunch of people come down there. We have a great celebration at the beach. If that sounds exciting to you, be sure you uh, go at 1230 and join that class. Not a long class, but we're going to talk about the meaning of baptism, what it's all about. Uh, and then also, if you need prayer, uh, we have folks up here on both sides who are waiting to pray for you. would love to pray for you. So if you're in the family worship venue, outdoors or in the worship center, you can join us for prayer on both sides of the, the stage here. If you're online and you want prayer, uh, we have people ready. If you just call the number there, and there's people that will answer the phone and pray with you right now on the phone. Or if you email your prayer needs, uh, we'll put it on the prayer list to get out to our whole prayer team. We've got a bunch of people that are passionate about prayer. If you email them, we'll put it on that list, and they'll be praying for you throughout the coming weeks. And then if you're new at Shoreline, if you're on campus and you're new, just come right to the lobby, right to the Connection Center. There's a whole team there. They want to give you a gift bag. Thank you for coming. Answer your questions. They'll give you a warm welcome. So anywhere on campus, that's available. If you're online... Simply text the word welcome to the phone number you see on your screen right now and we will send you a digital connection card and we'll do all we can to connect with you where you are until you're able to or ready to be on campus. And even if you're not, if you stay at home, we want to connect with you and make sure you're a part of God's church. So wherever you are, at home, a courtyard, family worship venue in here, let's stand together. If you're able to stand, let's stand and let me send you off with a word of blessing. As we close our time together, May you open your heart and your ears to hear the blessings that God is speaking to you. As you read the scriptures, hear his words of blessing. As you talk with other Christians and they have the courage to speak blessing, receive those words of blessing. As the Spirit speaks to your heart, receive those words of blessing. And then, wherever you go, all the time, keep your eyes open and your heart open. Say, Lord, pour your blessing through me and have courage to share the blessing of God everywhere you go. God bless you. Have a great rest of the week and we'll see you Wednesday night, 6.15, night of worship. God bless you. Have a great day.